I got a really interesting comment on one of my videos last week, and I thought I'd share that with you guys. This is from Neil. He says, what you said about looking at the students is very true, but there's a problem with many dojos in the U.S. When I studied, I noticed some students testing for higher belts and passing when they should have failed, while some other students were held to the appropriate standards. When I was a green belt, I started noticing I was better than many red or black belts, and I asked my instructor why he was so hard on me and not them. He said that he wouldn't be able to survive unless he passed certain people because he felt they would leave if he didn't and that at least he could focus on the students that were tough enough to stay regardless of passing or failing their tests. He said that most dojos in the U.S. had to do this. I stayed because he taught me well and I was the, it was the only dojo in town, but I never took a black belt test because I thought it was worthless coming from that school. Eventually, I went to a few different schools, and I saw the same things. It goes on a little more, but you get the idea. So his big uh, issue here is feeling like the belts were basically being given out too easily and that that's not something a good instructor would do. Well, let's talk about the belt system. There's pros and cons to it, like there is anything else. And personally, I really like the belt system. I decided to use it here at this academy, and I don't see myself giving it up anytime soon. It's valuable for a few reasons. One, it gives students a set of incremental goals to work toward. And if you look at human psychology, people love to have those little signs of improvement along the way. It just helps them stay with a journey. And the belt system is great for that. It's also great from the standpoint of if you're an instructor organizing your curriculum, you can put different skill sets in each belt and then see the things you want your students to acquire over time uh, pop up as they go through the belt system. It's also really nice when you're organizing your class, you can look right out there and see, okay, this person should know this thing, this person should know this thing, and you, you can easily uh, pair people up and so forth. So it has a lot of advantages. And the testing experience itself is really good for students because it gets them up there and performing under pressure. And that's something we really want uh, from martial arts students is being able to perform their material under pressure. That's, of course, something huge in martial arts. So the tests have a lot of uh, great benefits to them. They, they are a way for a student to celebrate their pros progress. Now there's also a hierarchy with the belt system. And here's where we can run into some trouble. If we perceive the hierarchy as the belts representing each student's fighting ability or ability to replicate the, the techniques of the art effectively or, or make it pretty, whatever you want to use as your standard, that can be a challenge. See, if you look at it as each student's individual journey, well, the, the serious martial artist is going to have a different journey than the average student. Now, those of you who are watching this video probably aren't average students because you're out researching, you're watching stuff on YouTube, you're kind of a martial arts nerd. A lot of people will come here just because they like the movements, they like the, the atmosphere, they like the, the social interactions with other people. It gives them something fun to do and they come a few times a week and they leave and they don't really think about the martial arts too much outside of class beyond that. And that's okay, it's providing a certain value to those people. Now, the, there are other people who really make this their life. It's like their thing outside of maybe work or school or whatever they're doing. And so, of course, they're going to, they're going to be much better as they move through the system than your more uh, hobbyist type of people. Now, is that a good or bad thing? Well, it's only a problem if you take the hierarchy of the belts too seriously. And there certainly is a hierarchy there because in the classes when they line up, for example, the students with the, the higher belt colors get to be closer to the instructors. And, and um, so there's definitely some sense of a hierarchy. But if you perceive it as one's ability to be tough, then uh, it, it should start to... To start to fall apart pretty quickly. Now, as far as I know, the only martial arts system that actually puts that standard on their black belts is Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. My understanding, and I'm not part of this community, but it's just my understanding, is that if you are a black belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, 
you know how to grapple. You're a good grappler. If you're grappling with someone, you should be able to beat them if they're uh, a significantly lesser ranked person, if you're a black belt in that system. And they take it to an extreme where, like, if a school puts out a black belt that shouldn't be a black belt, people from that community will go there and humiliate that black belt in front of their students um, and, and expose them as a fake black belt. Um, so they really require that standard of their black belts. Now, every other martial arts that I know of, martial arts system that uses the belt ranks, uh, they don't do that. There's inconsistency as to how tough a black belt is. So if you try to apply that hierarchy to other martial arts systems, it will, it will seem fraudulent because there's lots of black belts that aren't good at, at kicking and punching compared to middle ranks. There's lots of black belts that just aren't very tough people. So you have to ask, what does it mean? And I see it as an individual's progress through a system where you're giving them those goals to work toward. And it could be something beneficial to someone who's doing it at sort of a hobby level. And it could be beneficial to someone who's um, doing it really seriously, right? It's going to be beneficial to both those people. Now, why does that bother so many people? Like, it's just irritating that a black belt can be someone who's not that tough. Well, it's because they want, and this was me too, this is how I know this, it's because you want the social status that comes with that rank you want basically people to think you're tough because you have that rank. You view it like a university degree. So if you have a Harvard degree, you get more social status than if you have a degree from a community college. Because we know it's hard to get into Harvard. We know that requires a lot of work typically. So it comes with more social status. It helps you climb that social hierarchy. So if you have a piece of paper that people look at and they go, that guy sure is tough, or a or belt around your waist that people look at and they say, that guy sure is tough, that has some social value, right? And it's kind of like inflation. If you give out a bunch of uh, black belt certificates to people who aren't necessarily super tough, killing machines, <laughs> then you, from the standpoint of toughness, devalue those certificates. But the question is, should those certificates uh, even have that value in the first place? And I would argue, no. There's actually another way to get that status if you want it in most traditional martial arts, and that's competition. So if we're talking about Taekwondo, for example, uh, being a black belt does not make you a good fighter. But holding lots of uh, national medals, for example, especially in the black belt divisions, well, that probably means that you're pretty darn good at the martial art of Taekwondo. It's a much more objective measure of your capabilities in the system. So don't get so upset, I would say, if you uh, feel like you're not getting the status you want from those belts and belt certificates. Uh, it's just not there. It's, it's, a, it's a symbol that says you've been in the system a long time, basically. And that doesn't have the social clout that winning fights does. And here's the thing I realized. If you want to get the, the desired status where people go, oh, wow, that guy's really tough. Don't mess with that guy. You just have to fight a lot of people. You have to be good at fighting. And that takes a tremendous amount of work and hardship. You know, being a, a top-tier competitor isn't easy stuff. And so I had to really weigh in my mind, how much do you want to be a tough guy and versus how much do you want to go and compete and train for competition? And you know what? I don't really like um, competing. It's just not something that excites me. So it's a lot of what I would call work, whereas training for its own enjoyment isn't work to me. I love doing that, but I get to kind of focus on the different things I want to focus on. And I don't have to really zero in on a competitive goal. So a competitive goal will trap you in in some ways. And because that makes me more of a generalist, I don't get the social credit. I don't get the social uh, you know, raise on the hierarchy that someone who's a competitive fighter will get. But of course, they have to sacrifice to do that. And I determined it wasn't worth the sacrifice uh, for me personally.
If you love competitive fighting, then that's a great way to go. Uh, so I would say you won't get so upset with what the, the belt ranks mean if you view them as personal stepping stones for that individual, not as an ability or not as a, a metric, a certification of toughness. The certification of toughness, again, you can get it in those arts by competing and winning fights. Um, so I think that will help out a lot if you want to continue your training and go for that black belt. Just don't take it too seriously, I guess is what I would say. Now, if I were designing traditional martial arts from the ground up, I would do a different um, system because I think those hierarchies are kind of nice so people can see where they're at. You could do different types of black belts. So you could do a black belt with maybe a green embroidery, just throwing that out there, that uh, signifies that someone's just gone through the system for maybe your average type of student. Then you could do a black belt with a red embroidery for someone who is a fighter. They're going to competitions and they're knocking people out and they're tough as nails. And man, I wouldn't want to mess with that guy. You give them a different type of black belt because they've earned it a different way. They have that, and then they still have that social credit that comes along uh, with, with how we perceive a black belt. You could also do one that's more academically minded, maybe a gold embroidery for someone who just knows the system in and out. They can teach it to a class, no problem. Or maybe they know extra material than what they're supposed to um, because everyone approaches the martial arts a little bit differently and you can reward each of those different paths because ultimately I think martial arts should be accessible to people because it provides a lot of value that way. If it's only about being really tough, it just doesn't provide much value to that many people. And that's why most martial arts schools don't focus on that aspect because if we did, there would be two students and then you wouldn't have anyone to train with. <laughs> Um, and, you know, there are martial arts that really gear into that sort of thing, such as if you went to study mixed martial arts, you're going to learn to get tough. <laughs> and so that might be the better venue for someone who's really concerned with that social credit anyway. Because I think in the eyes of the public, the black belt uh, does not mean what it meant in 1979 where they thought, oh, that guy's a black belt, I bet he could rip my throat out. That's not how people think anymore. Some of the mystique has vanished. Um, so, wrapping it up, if you want social credit that, to make people think you're really tough, uh, you, can't, you can't really fake it and get it through a piece of paper. You've got to go out there and fight people. That's the best way to do it. That's why jiu-jitsu black belts are known as being tough because they have to fight a lot of people to get there. <laughs> and then uh, if, you, if, you know, if you are wondering about what a black belt should mean, I would view it just as a stepping stone uh, goal set for each individual student so they can see their journey through the martial arts, especially in the beginning uh, where it helps keep them motivated to continue the training and make it part of their lifestyle. Thanks for that comment. I hope you enjoyed the commentary. If you have any comments for this video, feel free to share below. If you like the content, give me a thumbs up. That always helps. And I'll be back with another video this week since I missed the one last week. This recording has been made twice. Uh, the first one had some kind of problem go into it, and I didn't realize until I got to editing. So, see you again soon.